My name is Julie Feigum. I'm the owner of the Glass Garden Workshop. I am also um, have a studio named Just Julie Art, and that's all my special stuff that I create. But today, what I'm going to be doing is doing a small tutorial on soldering. As an artist, I do notice that sometimes one of the hardest things to learn is the soldering part. And I feel bad because there's a lot of bad information out there on the internet. Uh, a lot of things that I wouldn't do, a lot of things that can frustrate you. Um, and I really find that discouraging because at the very end of all the hard work that you've done with your pattern prep, your colors, your glass, the expense, it all comes down to soldering it together and if that looks crappy I'm going to tell you right now it ruins all the hard work that you've done with everything else I know a uh, patina can hide a multitude of sins but it can't hide um, the really poor soldering the the highs the lows the uh, I call the pigtails. There's some things that when you foil, it, there's no nose. Uh, there's a lot of little things that I'm really fussy about. And being a teacher of over 15 years, I've had a lot of students and they used to look at me and say, oh, I thought it was a perfect line. Well, yeah, it's getting there. They had to know that my name was on what I taught them and if anybody else would come to my studio for classes. so. My name was on that piece too. So I want you to know that I am particular um, and I want you to do good. I want you to be non-frustrated when you do your soldering. I want you to be happy about your finished product. Um, I also teach um, decorative soldering, but we're gonna do the basics and then I'll teach you a few things on decorative soldering and we'll go from there. So let's get going. I'm gonna show you the things that I use. I use the Eagle Brand solder and it's the 6040. Um, um, this, you can find this online too, sorry. Uh, I think it's on, it's on eBay. You can look up the company directly and they'll take you right to their website. This I use, I think it's on, it's on eBay. You can look up the company directly and they'll take you right to their website. I bought up a bunch of this flux because I like it. It's a non-smoking flux. I hate the smoke part of it. So I use this. I've been using this for the, the same amount of years that I've been doing glass, which is 28 years. So it's been in business for a long time. Uh, if you have a liquid flux, a gel flux, um, I'm, I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and use those. You've been used to those. I'm just saying this is what I used to use, or this is what I use now, but I don't think you can get your hands on any. But I have to show you anyway. Um, this is my flux brush. If you have a flux brush, throw it away. <laughs> I'm going to teach you with this. Go get a Q-tip. Go get a Q-tip out of your bathroom. I use Q-tip brand. There's other ones out there, but this one I seem to have no issues with. And I go through quite a few of these for a piece that I'm going to be doing. And I also use this for my patina. Okay, you can put it in a little cup. This one I got from Alaska a couple years ago. My little enamel cup. You can't drink coffee out of them because they're too hot to hold. <laughs> but it holds Q-tips just fine. Some steel wool. He's in my little dog my little trash can dog, I found him at a yard sale. I love him. Um, put things out that inspire you, make you smile. It's all about really enjoying what you do and making your work environment happy, okay? So, this is what we got. That's zero watt steel wool, that's four zeros and that's going to be what we use to do patina. So, we'll start out with a brand new Q-tip. I have a little tiny, um, little tiny 
setup here because a lot of people will dunk it right in their jar. I got to tell you, I am the queen of dumping my flux, brand new flux jars every time. You should have seen the, I had a huge, never mind. I had a mess on my board all the time from flux that I dumped. My board used more flux than I did. So we're going to take this. I'm dunking it in there. And I even had a little piece of terry cloth towel in here. And I actually even kind of dab it off. I don't need that much flux. So here we go. I put some test strips down here. Nothing fancy black back foil. And this is just to teach you how to spread a line. You can see I don't, I'm not running. I don't have a ton in flux. It's not dripping off my glass. It's staying right put where it's at. And that's what you want. Heiko is what I call it. Uh, everybody has a different name or how they pronounce it, I should say. I'm running at about 310 right now, okay? If your tip is anything but silver, like this, shiny, like your, foil, like your um, should be the same color as your solder. If it's black, purple, green, blue, I think I said black, <laughs> turn your iron down. It just needs to be at melting point. It doesn't need to be at turbo torch point, okay? Now, some people run their solder. I don't. Um, I do some just spaces like this on my glass. You can tell just putting it on there like this. Okay. I hope I keep you all in tune here or in line so with the camera. And I apologize for yesterday's technical difficulties, but I think today it's going to be better. Now I'm going over the top of it. Do you see how slow I'm going? I'm going real slow. And the reason for that is I'm going to give myself a nice line. If there's some places that's a little low, you just put your solder line. You just take a little bit of solder, hold it down, let it melt, and then continue to run your line, okay? And that's okay. You can you can go over this again. It's not a big deal. If you want a real smooth line, might not put enough down when I first laid it. So I'm going to go all the way to the end. I take my flux Q-tip. I can go over it again. I'm going to do it one more time. That's it. Just one more time. Don't need to do it three, four, five, six times. And if you do, what will end up happening, you'll break your glass. I tell everybody don't hang out long. One spot. Just go over it. No paint brushing. Paint brushing is bad. See, I broke my glass. Got it too hot. Paint brushing is basically where you go... And you can see that it's 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 not working. Okay, you can't paintbrush. It just doesn't work. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way off to the side. There. Even though I broke my glass, I should have cleaned it in between, and I wouldn't have done that, but I didn't. So that's it. That's all you gotta do. And I got a nice, nice line right there. I take my cleaner. This is what I use. It's Invisalign cleaner, glass cleaner. You can get it in a spray or a liquid. And just wipe it off, okay? Just like that. Keep your lines nice and silver. Okay. give this one more try let's not break the glass this time and that doesn't happen when you've got two pieces of glass but I'm putting extreme heat to this so let's let's give it another whirl okay once again I don't run solder because I find it it's a waste and if you don't have enough flux on there just go back over it one more time that's it Okay. 
Now I'm going to go back over it. I'm going to go nice and slow. You can see how I'm holding my iron too. It's flat. Just going to run that line. Turn my iron up just a snidge. There's some resistance there. It's, let me clean it off real quick so I don't get this too hot and it cracks it again. Yeah, I turned the iron up just a hair because it's just not quite melting it all the way. I think it's up to 215 now. Or 315, I'm sorry. Okay. And you definitely want that little hump on there. That's important. If you don't have that little that little bump on your on your glass, like if it's not raised, you're not going to have a very good sturdy line. Okay, so we got it raised up. Now wipe it off. And you got a nice line right there. And I'm cracking my glass because of that over there, which is okay. All right, so we got two nice lines going here. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, let's try this. Got a sponge here that I'm using. You hear it sizzle. Take a little bit of my flux even. Don't get my, I dunk my tip of my iron in there. It doesn't hurt it. In this here, just like this. Okay, and it, this is what tinning is called. I do a lot of tinning on stuff before I do decorative solder. You don't need to make a big um, raised uh, line to do decorative solder. Um, you're just going to lay a small line there to get you going, okay? Now, you see it's nice and clean. I take my Q-tip, just barely just go over it again, just like that. And I'm gonna make what they call pillows. It's one of the easiest ones to do. Um, a lot of people say, yeah, sure, it's easy. Okay, it's easy when you know how to do it, okay? It's a technique. I'm only going to take off exactly the, the width of my iron, okay? I pull straight down and I set it on there and just drop it, okay? You don't have to do anything special. You wait for it to dry. It will dimple. Um, and I'll see if I can't get a picture of that where it dimples up. Okay, here we go. And it's going to dimple. There's a little dimple. It's a little crease. It's like a little tiny crease that will just... You'll see it, it just kind of dries and then dimple. I call it a dimple. Okay. If you wait for that to happen, then you can lay your next one. If you lay it before it dimples, they will run together. And then you'll have one big long pillow and you won't like it. There's times you can do those, but this isn't that time. Okay. So here we go. Just going right down the line. Somebody says, how do you get them so uniformed? Watch. Here we go. The width of my iron. They're all going to be the same. If I take less, the pillow is going to be smaller. 
and it also does this kind of number. It doesn't fill in all the way. So get get it right. That made it a little longer because there's more solder. Okay, it's not bad though. You can still use that. And you just keep going right down. Now you can spread those out. So you have, there you go. You can leave a space in between. And they're uniform because I'm taking the same amount of solder off my tip there. Watch. One, two, doink. Always works better with sound effects, right? All right, just like that. And they're puffed up like your, your other solder lines, which is really nice. Um, but that's another way of doing that. All right. And there we have some decorative soldering, which is pretty cool. Okay. Try to not get too much glare. It's kind of hard when you're doing this. And they, they are raised up just enough. You don't need them jumping off the glass. They're perfect just the way they are. Okay. Take that one piece off that was broke. So that's how that works, okay? Now to teach you, there's a couple things that you can do just to start learning about your solder. Get to know your iron. Um, there is, you've got to know the, the melting temperature. You have to know uh, different angles and different sides of your iron. Different things happen when you use different sides. I mean, you use the very tip of your iron that can make a different design. It's just little tiny, nothing major. They're just little dots, but they're not, they're elongated dots, okay? Like a marquee diamond. Just kind of go back and forth from top to bottom, okay? But you see, because I'm using the very tip of my iron, it makes those a little narrower. Let's see, let's see how that works. Okay. And I use the very, somebody says, you use different tips. Nope. Same tip. It's the same tip I bought when I got it. It came with it. Let's measure it. Let's see if I can get this to stay out so you know. I got the cheater one here. So it is the eighth inch tip. Okay. It's not a big tip. Okay. You can get them bigger. Um, do you need a bigger one? Uh, maybe for different applications. But I've never used a bigger tip. I've used smaller tips, but never a bigger one. Now, I'm going to use the very corner that tip right there okay maybe on this side though I'm going to probably use that one um this is going to and then I take my my little flux q-tip down it goes goes across and remember how much you're putting on there I'm barely touching my solder somebody wants to know how I get them all looking the same it all has to do with how much solder you're taking off with your tip, okay? And as you can see, they're all pretty much the same size. And I'm sticking down to the one edge. Now, if I would have tinned it, they would have gone out further than this. But because I didn't tin it, they're staying close to the edge. They're perfect little dots. Right on the edge, okay. I love those. Those are my favorite. I like I like the little tiny dots. Um, somebody said, how do you make the dots? Dots are easy. They're just, you have to mess with them a little bit. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> that's all I can tell you. That's the most important. Now there's one I laid down. Wait till it dries. And then I put one on top of that. So you can lay one down and then wait till it dries and then make another little dot on top. Learning the dots are really important for other decorative solder things. Okay. You can blow on it too. That will make it dimple quicker. And you see I got 
dots on top of it. Okay. And I can even put dots on top of those dots. After they dry, you can, yeah, or after they cool down, you can always do more dots on top. Little tiny ones. But it's always good to flux again if you have to, so they'll stick. I'm getting little tiny dots on top of dots. So that one didn't, now that one comes up as a point because I didn't have enough flux on it. So as soon as you put some flux on it, it will go down right to a dot. <laughs> there you go. So these are some techniques I teach on my DVD um, about learning how to do the dots, uh, training you on uh, different directions on which your solder will flow because a lot of times I'll hold my piece up a certain way. So my solder rolls down. Let me tin this. I'm just going to tin it real quick. Turn it around here. There we go. And then I hold my I hold my glass up on one side. And that's going to make a difference on how my solder flows. And I'm just putting it up on the top edge. And that's going to give that a whole different look. Kind of gives it a, I want to say like a pocket vase look. It's wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. Um, and this one I'm trying to keep enough apart that I don't have to worry about it drying and then mixing in together. But here you'll see in just a second how that looks. See it's wider at the top and that narrows down at the bottom. And it's all because I held my glass up on its edge. Okay. Well, there's a lot to learn in decorative soldering. Um, there's technique, there's iron control, there's solder, plays a big part. There's several different kinds of solder. People use 50-50, some people. I use silver gleam for my jewelry and that's expensive. So you really don't wanna mess around. You wanna be able to mess around on everything else and be very confident when you do your jewelry because of the silver gleam is a little expensive. You don't want to have to wipe it all off and start over again. It's just too expensive to do that. So basically, you know, you're going to learn a lot um, with the soldering techniques. Um, it's really fun to do. Um, I'm going to show you on the, I'm going to talk to you really quick about the corrosion or whiting that you get around your black um, patina after you're done with the piece. Oh, now that one definitely had too much solder on there and that's what happens. Okay, I've got some, I got some black patina we're gonna use. Okay, I'm sure everybody knows this brand. It's been around forever. Okay. Always clean it, always clean it. If you don't clean it right away, and I keep telling everybody that, I don't care if you thought you cleaned it and you don't know for sure, go back and clean it just because. Um, if, you, if you're running iridized glass, the longer you keep your flux on there, it will, it at your, um, it all depends on glass too, I have to say. You know, you get the cheap stuff from Hobby Lobby. Uh, it seems to etch that glass a little more so than the better glass from some of the different glass companies. So I'm really pressing hard on this. So, all right, so I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna just pour a little bit in my lid gonna throw the flux brush out this one is just fine okay now I'm gonna just oh wait a minute I want to get a little bit of steel wool out if you want real black lines this is what we do you're gonna be able to see how this roughs it up too okay Once again, give it another try. Now watch how fast this turns black. 
should only take a couple seconds to turn black and that's exactly what it does. It just kind of goes boom. It's done. It's very black. It's blacker than some. That's okay because I'm going to take some of my steel wool and steel wool that off. Okay. And you can do the same with this other one. You can see it takes the shiny out of out of the foil, um, which it just kind of gives it a satin finish, which is fine because that's what makes that solder line um, take the patina better. So, okay, I'm gonna push this over to the side for just a second. This one, same thing. It went from a real shiny line to a satin line. Now the copper foil should not take because I did not tin it first, so. Okay, oh. There's nothing that says you cannot I throw that away. Don't keep them. Don't keep them around. Okay. And I wipe it off. You could, you don't have to tin your copper if you didn't want to. If you want to have it a little different. Everybody's different in what they do. Um, tinning makes it a sturdier piece. Um, if you're going to do a copper overlay, you don't have to tin it, I should say. Copper overlay is just the copper over the piece of a piece of glass. But if you're gonna do it like a regular panel or a sun catcher or something like that, you have to tin it. Okay, now I'm just gonna hit the high spots. That gives it just that little more dimension. Gives you that dark background. Okay. That's what it looks like. Over here. My glass actually let loose, which is fine. I can still show you how to do this. Take there. Take your steel wool, make sure it's all dry. Hit the high spots. This one you can just Go over if you want, just to kind of make it look antique. That's what that looks like. Okay. Throw that away. So I think what you learned is just basics of soldering. Um, I know this was supposed to be a wire work uh, tutorial too. Uh, I, be, I haven't made my wire work, um, have not made that dvd yet uh, i need to start that dvd i've been i've been bugged about getting it done <laughs> i'm busy okay um so basically what i'm doing right here i'll show you real quick on um on this oh i should have showed you that okay so what you can do after you're done with I need to do that. After you're done uh, polishing it uh, with your steel wool, I just use some pledge and I wipe it off on the glass and it doesn't matter. The pledge just really does an awesome job. I've been using this stuff for years. Um, as long as, from my, from my stained glass teacher to now, this is 20 some, 28 years ago. So um, this is something that I've used, that she taught me to use. I love it. Look at that. It's a gorgeous line. There's nothing wrong with that line. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you why there's issues with people and um, the white stuff that comes up. I wanted to do that. So the problem is, <clears throat> When you're doing this, the problem being that people use the flux brush, okay? I'll just say this is like a flux brush, all right? And they dip it in there. And then they just spread it all over, you know? They get it all over. I've watched this, okay? Okay, and then they 
what they do, they take their iron and they start going over the two lines, okay? And it's popping and it's sizzling and you can hear all this stuff going on and it's and it's like, and you're getting bubbles in your solder and you're going, okay. And you go over it several times and the glass can crack because you're getting it really hot. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, I got a lot of flux on there. It should stick and now it's sticking. And then you wipe it off. I clean mine off. Some people don't. They don't do it until the very end, and that's a big mistake. But they clean it off, and they flip it over. So they flip it over. Now, there's no way you're going to be able to get that flux that's between the glass. Your iron does burn off some of the flux, but not all of it, okay? They take their flux brush once again, dip it in, slather it on there, okay? They get it all in there and they start and it's popping and it's cracking and it's doing all its stuff, you know. Okay, what's going on is in between these two lines of glass, some solder has slipped down in between. Okay, that's good. That's what it's supposed to do. But not all solder, not all flux gets burnt off. A lot of it sits in there, okay. Then you put that top layer of solder on, and now it's trapped. That flux is in there. There's no way you're going to get it out. So what's it do? It's corroding from the inside out. That's why you get all the little white garbage around your black patina lines. So remember, when you use the Q-tip, you're not. And you've seen my solder stuck to it. I might have to go over it another time. Not, you don't have to all the time, but I might have to go over it one more time. You know how long a bottle of flux lasts me? A lot longer than the ones with the flux brush, okay? I don't see the need of running my hands through all the gross flux and getting it on my forearms and, you know, the mess that it just creates. And not to say, to say the least, it, it messes up with your soldering lines at the very end of your project. So don't use it. Don't use the flux brush. If you if you continue to do it, then you can't go on a site and say, why do I have this problem? Why is this corrosion coming up on my black lines? Or why aren't my silver lines more shiny? I've waxed it and I've done all this and it's just kind of white and chalky looking. It's because there's flux trapped between the glass, between both sets of solder lines. So you've got that little stuff in there and it's got to come out somewhere. So no matter how much you clean it, no matter how much you do to it, Karuba Wax, um, uh, Pledge, um, Baking Soda, let me tell you all the ones I've heard, Baking Soda, Barkeeper's Friend, uh, Vinegar, all these different things. Steel Wall, yeah, it will take it off for like a split second and then a week later it will all be back again after you patina it again. It's never going to go away because it's trapped. That's it on the soldering. Um, I I am going to put be putting my DVD on the soldering of uh, decorative soldering on the site um, on the cell site of this of this um, glass uh, beginners for you or yeah beginner stained glass beginners whatever <laughs> just I'm not sure the name anyway. I've got um, just a quick thing on my um, my wire work. Um, I don't use a jig. I use the edge of my table. Let me see if I can swing it over here. You see here, right here? And what I do, I pull down hard on it and then pull up. Make sure your board's connected. Pull back down, pull back up. And I get a natural curve, okay? I, that is just naturally curved in the right spot. Okay, so then what I do, I take the clear cutters that I have, and I cut it like this. And I'll cut this side, because this is a small curl, this isn't a big one. Just, and you see how it's already it's already curled. I mean, basically, I could make a circle and just, and it's a pretty perfect circle because of how I just got done 
uh, stretching it. You see, look at that. It's almost a perfect circle. I could, I, I could solder the ends together and I'd have a circle. And this is 14 gauge wire. I get this off of uh, Warner Glass. I, everybody has this. Um, the jewelry one, you, there's certain ones, yes, you can solder to, but a lot of them you can't. They'll show them and they say, oh yeah, you can, not all of them can you do that. It, it says jewelry on there because most of the wire work for jewelry, you do not need to solder anything. It's just a matter of making uh, knots that go a certain way and it tucks in and behind and you don't need to solder. So um, this is just something I picked up off the stained glass sites and it's pre-tinned wire. This is 14 gauge. Now that I pulled it along the edge of my table, what I've done is I've made it stronger. It isn't as pliable. Okay, I'm gonna take a pair of my pliers. These are needle nose with a bend, okay? There is no teeth in here. The teeth is what mars the wire. We don't wanna mar the wire up at all, so we don't need anything. These are jeweler's uh, pliers. You can get those at Hobby Lobby. Okay, and as you can see, this wire is already curved, so I'm just gonna basically, no jig now. All I do is kind of just pull it around. You can see how I'm doing this. And I use my fingers, and I just keep twisting. Come up a little bit, twist a little bit more. And you can see the wire did most of it, all I did was give it a little help with a little bit of turning of my pliers, okay? I got a nice big curl. I can cut this off right here. Now I got an open end curl, all right? I can take this side, now I take my pliers, I actually kind of go upside down and then I pull this around. Okay, and I just keep going. Okay, and see how it's a little lopsided right there? So what I do, I go up here and I push down on this. I hold that other section up so I can get that little curve a little better. So, and then it's just a matter of you got an eye and that eye is telling you, hey, that's a little flat on that side. So you just keep working it until you have it curled out, okay? And that, that curl's a little more difficult just because the wire is not curved in the direction in which you're doing it. Now I take this inside curve and I hold this tight, okay? And I curve that in it. And that's a little tighter to do, a little tougher to do to get that inside tight curl, but that's how you get that real tight inside curl. Now see the difference? This one is a little prettier, this one's a little more open. So I can do the same thing here. I just hold it right here. I'm gonna hold it as I pull in and twist and twist some more. Like I said, and if you see that it's a little flat in the spot, you can fix that. It's not that hard to fix it, but there we got the curl, all right? Now I made these curls, and then I have this little piece left over. Oh, what am I gonna do with that? Well, I can make a curl. I'll just go ahead and make this little curl right here. Watch me curl this up. Okay, now you saw I had all these other little curls <laughs> and so basically I can add curls on curls and it's all about soldering from this point on. Okay, so this one I'll just bend down a little bit because I want it to go in a different spot. And so I get it so it goes in there. It made a little heart up here. This one here, I could even go way up here. And I've got a design. Um, everyone's a little different. 
just change it around a little bit. It's crazy, but it doesn't take much. There you go. I got a it's a crazy heart. This one now because I've changed that, I'm gonna just kind of take my fingers and push that around. There you go. I take this wire here and I stick that right and you see it's all curled up so I gotta pull it down a little bit. There you go. Now all the wires are different. There's just several of them that I've curled, cut, and then put into places. I do not draw these out. I just do it. I don't know how to explain that to you other than you watched me just now. I just made a bunch of curls and then I cut them apart. I put them in places and I, when I see the design I like, then I tack solder them together. So that's a little bit on the wire work. I still have a video to make on that and people are pushing me. So um, the more you ask me to make it, the quicker I'll get it done. Between all my madness right now, I'm doing a lot of special orders for things. So um, I appreciate all your people uh, asking for this. Uh, I feel very um, honored that you want me to do it. I hope it comes out. I'm, I'm just kind of like, I got my fingers crossed. <laughs> but uh, thank you, Mitzi and Kevin, for asking me on this site uh, to show you how I do this work. And I hope, beyond all hope, you continue your, um, your beautiful site with all the beautiful people. They had such wonderful comments with all my frustrations about not being able to get my video on last night. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate all your kind words. And uh, really, work on the soldering. Uh, it's, the, it's the very end piece of your creation. And it's the most important as far as I'm concerned. So um, keep, keep plugging along. And I will also have a link, I guess, for buying my DVD on your sale site. So have a good evening, guys. I appreciate all your kind words and hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye.